okay so uh, let me tell you something about the implants some basic principles of the implants and common implants which are used in orthopedics right basically we use three things to fix a fracture either you can use a plate you can use a intramedullary nail or you can use a external fixator now it depends on condition to condition which implant to be used it depends on the position of the fracture the site of the fracture where the fracture is which implant to be used right now before i tell you something very basic about the plate or the intermedial nail let me tell you about the bone see long bones basically they have two surface right they have two surfaces they have one compressive side of the bone right one is compressive side of the bone and other is the tension side of bone so when i was taking the satellite session yesterday the tnd there was a confusion sir which one is the tension side which one is compressive side tension side of the bone is usually the convex side it is usually on the convex side right so every long bone it has got two surfaces one is compressive side of the bone other is tension side of the bone which is usually a convex side of the bone so if you talk of the femur which is like this here so this side the lateral side will be your tension side right lateral side will be the tension side of the bone and this side is your compressive side of the bone right so if you want to fix a plate you should know the basic principle of plating right the basic principle of plating is that it's best when applied on tension surface of the bone it's best when applied on tension side of the bone right do remember this fact okay now why so why the plate is best when applied on tension side see this is a tension side if you want if you block this tension side the plate normally we use is known as a compressive plate or a compression plate right when you apply this plate on the tension side of the bone it behaves as a tension band right the plate will behave as a tension band on this tension side now what this does instead of this tension now what happens to this plate now when you apply the plate here on this surface what will happen it behaves as a compression force here it behaves as a compression force therefore the compression plates are best when applied on the tension side of the bone now in orthopedics we basically have two or three you can say common types of plates that we use the first one that you see here the first image it is what you call a dcp right it is known as a dynamic compression plate it is what you call a dynamic compression plate right now what you can observe the length and width and these holes in the plate they are very smooth right there is no serration in them this is a normally traditionally used plate now what is the disadvantage of this plate this advantage of this plate is extra periosteal damage it is an extra periosteal damage now to counter this problem what has been developed is the image number 2 that you see here see this if you compare the image upper image and the lower image what is the difference the length width hole everything is same the change is the extra portions of the plate they have been removed right see here these are known as limited contact dcp or lc dcp this is what to call a limited contact dcp now what is the advantage why this extra portion of the plate has been removed advantage here is that this plate it is in limited contact with the bone therefore it has less damage therefore it causes less damage to the periosteum that is why this plate has been designed the limited contact so full plate is not in contact with the bone it is a limited area of the plate which is in contact with the bone so this is one so dcp or lc dcp 
now there is another modification of this plate which has been made this is number plate plate number 3 now what you call this plate we can call it a locking plate or a locking compression plate now as you see why locking compression plate you see the hole of this plate it has got a 8 design the hole is in design of 8 upper part of the circle upper part of the hole it is smooth right why it is smooth like the other plates like this plate compressor plate it is smooth so that we can fix a compressive screw here but if you see the lower circle lower half of the circle it has got threads into it now why there is a thread that is why it is known as a locking plate when you pass the screw the screw also of this plate will have threads into the head when we put this screw into this plate the screw head gets fixed to these serrations right instead of getting fixed to the bone now the screw head it has got fixed to the plate so these are useful in those bones these are useful in those bones in which there is no capacity in which the bones are so weak that they cannot hold the screw and the screw can back out so what we use in them or in an osteoporotic patient is a locking plate so wherever you think the bone is weak it cannot hold the screw right the purchase of the screw or the strength of the screw inside the bone the hold is not very good then you can use a locking plate as the screw will get fixed to the plate and not exactly to the bone so these kind of plates are useful in a osteoporotic patients right then you have another thing the nails the intramedullary nails so second implant that we normally use in orthopedics is an intramedullary nail now intramedullary nails why they are known as intramedullary because you have to pass them through the medullary area central portion of the bone these are implants of choice these are implants of choice in long weight bearing bones right in long weight bearing bones either it is your tibia or femur right why so what is the advantage of nails advantages are number one incision is less right incision size will be less number two the fracture hematoma the fracture hematoma which is disturbed in cases of plates when you have to put the plate you will put an incision over the skin then you will just remove the soft tissues the hematoma and everything so fracture hematoma is not disturbed here or minimally disturbed here as compared to the plates or minimally disturbed as compared to the plates plates will disturb the complete fracture hematoma right which has got very high osteogenic potential the cells right that is another advantage number three advantage is that these are weight sharing implants these are weight sharing implants patient can be made to walk or patient can be made the patient can be allowed to stand in a few days which is not possible with the plates right they cannot resist the bending force so plates usually fail when you apply them on the weight bearing bones so plates are usually weight bearing implants and nails are usually weight sharing implants do remember it right now these two i have purposefully placed two nails here which nail is belonging to which bone the upper nail it belongs to your tibia and the lower nail belongs to your femur this nail that you see in the image is what you call a pfn pfn stands for proximal femoral nail this proximal femoral nail right and this one upper one is a tibial nail remember tibial nail they have got a angulations and femoral nail they have got a curve as per the curve of your thigh bone the femur right so this is just the base about the nails and the plates do remember it this question has already been asked in your pgi exam 